Okay, here's an interesting story. In 1990, an amendment was made to the Clean Air Act in the United States aimed at reducing the release of carbon monoxide into the atmosphere to reduce air pollution. Part of the law mandated that gasoline and automobiles must have a minimum amount of oxygenate additive, a chemical compound that helps fuel burn more completely and thus limits the soot and carbon monoxide released into the atmosphere. From 1992 to 2005, the most popular oxygenate for gasoline was methyl tert-butyl ether, or MTBE. But in the early 2000s, a number of cases of MTBE contaminating groundwater raised concerns about its health effects. The gasoline additive MTBE was first noticed in the water in 2001. Residents reportedly got sick from drinking it. 2004, both New York and California banned the chemical from the state, a big blow considering Cali and NY accounted for 40% of nationwide MTBE consumption. A year later, in 2005, 23 more states followed suit and banned the chemical. In that same year, Congress passed the Energy Policy Act, which did not include provisions to shield MTBE manufacturers from those pesky water contamination lawsuits. And so with no protections against growing public outcry, the country was forced to turn to alternative ways of gasoline oxygenation. What filled the void? was ethanol. In the last 10 years, ethanol manufacture and consumption has risen like a rocket ship. In 2010, the US was the world's top ethanol producer with 13.2 billion gallons, or 57.5% of global production. Ethanol is a biofuel, which means that it's a fuel produced from living organisms. In the case of America, the majority of ethanol comes from corn. The increase of demand for ethanol, driven in part by US legislation to reduce air pollution, has led to the widespread expansion of cropland to produce more corn, especially in the Midwest and Great Plains. Right smack dab in the middle of the monarch butterfly migration path. Whoa, not the butterflies, dude. Indigenous to North America and instantly recognizable to anyone who lives here, the monarch butterfly makes the longest and most spectacular migration of any insect in the world. Every winter, the monarch population flies 2,500 miles from its many homes in America and Canada to specific warm sites in Mexico and Southern California. On the way, it lays eggs for the next generation, but it can only lay them in one place milkweed plants. It's an odd feature of nature that monarch larvae eat milkweed leaves and nothing else, but they do. And as much as monarch larvae love that milkweed, farmers hate it. It's a weed. Weed reduces yield, and less yield means less money. So in addition to clearing pristine lands in the Great Plains where milkweed thrives, farmers have increasingly adopted genetically modified crops, which are resistant to herbicides like Roundup. I'd like to introduce you to Roundup Quick Pro. This product is produced by Monsanto. It is a post-emergent, non-selective herbicide. Naturally, this poses a serious danger to the population of the monarch butterfly, which has fallen a mind-blowing 90% since its peak in 1996. The losses of milkweed are only part of the reason why the monarch population is crashing. Illegal deforestation of their winter home in Mexico and a couple years of bad weather have hurt their ability to make the long journey south and north again. But even when conditions are right, monarchs now have to fly farther and longer to find places to lay their eggs. Often they die before making it there. No one is talking about the extinction of the monarch just yet, but a 56% loss of monarch population in one year, 2013, is nothing to sneeze at. Both America and Mexico have pledged to do what's necessary to save the monarch. And if you wanna help, you can learn how to build butterfly gardens in your backyard. I don't know about you, but to me, this is an amazing story. A story of the unintended consequences of human action on Earth. Legislation passed in the US years ago to fight pollution has come to pose a serious long-term threat to one of nature's loveliest creatures. It's certainly a cliche to say everything in nature is connected, but it is.